My name is Shane Olson and today we're going to be sculpting another character by my good friend Mitch Leoway. Uh, I love his designs. So let's head on over to the ZBrush and get it going. Hope you guys are all doing well today. <clears throat> hey Neil, how's it going? Hey Mark. All right. Here we go. So I thought I'd do something simple today, not get too crazy. This is a, an alligator from one of Mitch's books. Just so you guys know, Mitch uh, Leoway, he does some amazing um, books for his Patreon. So if you're interested in learning how to draw awesome cartoon characters like Mitch draws, then I highly recommend you go check out his stuff. So, okay. Thank you, Mitch. Here we go. Hey Sammy, how are you? I guess I can get some of these going on. There we go. So I usually start my characters by blocking out the shapes with primitive objects. And I have these brushes that I give away for free over on my website, 3D Character Workshop. Um, the specific brush that I'm using is going to be called the insert primitive brush. It's just a bunch of primitives that I made that I insert. Um, I basically draw a shape on another shape. It works really well. Hey Thomas, how are you? Neil, I wish I could have you click on these things for me. <laughs> but I, I don't know how to do it. Hey Gnu, how's it going? Okay, so um, I'm just gonna evaluate. I'll probably build him in two, well, multiple parts, but two main parts, his upper and lower mouth. I like that logo, Gnu, it's pretty cool. Okay, let's see here. Get this stretched out. Longish. I was just telling Neil I've made so many characters I've forgotten which ones I've made and which ones I haven't. I was looking at some of my concepts that I've made that I just haven't sculpted yet. And then I got to thinking, well, maybe I have sculpted those. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, hey Doomer, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. Let's see here. This is a tricky one. It's got this kind of cool snout. He's almost dragon-like. Hey, Carlos, how are you? Oh, so what's up with Restream Bot? Is it just gone for good? Or what are they, what's going on with that? Turn on symmetry and just start to widen this out. Yeah, Carlos, it's been a while. How are you? Let's see here. I'll probably flatten out this whole thing. Maybe I'll just start with a curve brush. Clip curve and just make, flatten it out and then pull it around with this Move Infinite. This Move Infinite brush is cool because it will shoot the move all the way through the object. Good, good. They're doing well, thanks. How about you? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll ask Kyle about it, but I think it may be, um, may be a restream thing. I'm not sure. This guy might go pretty quick. <laughs> Hopefully I can make him last uh, two hours. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right, let's... Maybe I'll squish this bit up. Yeah, this Move Infinite brush, as I was saying it, it pushes the move all the way through the object. A regular move brush would only move 
in the in the brush zone, <laughs> but the move infinite will shoot all the way through, which comes in handy. Hey, Cat Trotter, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's uh, going to um, Z remesh this just for fun at a very low poly count, but I want to um, subdivide it once so it's a smoother surface. Now let's try it. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay. And I'm sure I'll Z-remesh it a few more times. So how are you all doing? Are you sculpting along? If so, what are you working on today? I always like to hear what people are doing. ZBrush is amazing. I have still have hours of learning to do. ZBrush is amazing and fun. That's the that's the good part about learning ZBrush is it's fun. Hey Janet, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I just tried. I just decided to um, just do something simple, you know, simple-ish. So I'm using this clip curve brush and it respects um, masking. So you can use it, see how this upper portion of the mouth is masked off. I can, uh, so I can use that clip curve brush and it will ignore it. Nothing for me on vacation from computer. That sounds about some, like something I should do. So, um, what do I think about, that's a, that's a pretty big question, Janet, um, but on, honestly, what I think about it is I'm quite happy with it because it puts food on the tables of the developers that make the software. And I feel like they should have done it a long, long time ago. Um, you know, as, as for a user, they've just been very generous for us and now we expect it. Um, but I feel like the software is so great that they should have been charging for updates a long time ago. So I have no problem with it at all. You know, I might make his, it's supposed to be a crocodile, this guy. So, hey, George, how are you? Thanks, Carlos. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Fixing topology before sending it off to my lead. I love ZBrush, but I have found Maya to be a little better for topology. I have to agree with that. Um, ZBrush does have some topology uh, stuff built into it, but I typically use it for making small pieces like armor and whatnot. At the moment, I'm making some architectural visual visualizations. Oh, nice. Nothing wrong with that. And just so you know, you guys are you guys are watching the official Maxon ZBrush channel, so I'm not going to talk about other software too much. I'm going to keep the focus on ZBrush, if you don't mind. Okay, so. I'm gonna split this off so I can Z-remesh it. See how this is really uh, low polygons and this is quite high, so I'm gonna subdivide this once and then Z-remesh it at point two to see what we got. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I did and it's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. I'm just saying I just don't want to get into a big, you know, big debate or anything like that. All right. 
then, yeah, I feel like I want to make it's so, you know, crocodiles or alligators, whatever you want to call them, they're, their snouts, they, they, they narrow from wide to narrow. And um, I kind of want to let this, how, how wide this lower jaw is inform me as far as how wide the, the width is as well down here. But I don't want it to look like a frog either. So we'll have to try stuff. Hey, Kenya, how are you? Working on a gnome surfboard. Nice. What is a gnome? Oh, gnome on a surfboard. Okay, got you. I'm like, what is a gnome surfboard? <laughs> Very cool. Okay, whoops. I accidentally popped this open. Hey, Muddy, welcome. Okay, good, good, good. Good, good, just trying to block this out. Okay, let's see. get some spheres in here to represent the smile smile portions of this this will be interesting hey Spencer Spencer how, how's it going it's going well thanks Curve this around. It's kind of tricky. Oh, turn the spotlight projection off. Turn on dynamic subdiv for that and for this, make them smoother. Been waiting all week for this stream. Well, thank you very much. Glad you're here. Appreciate it. Hey, mic drop. How's it going? Um, I'm going to split this off too, I think. And let's get a neck on him so I can kind of figure that out. Let's do an appendage back here. I can only imagine what his body looks like, <laughs> but I'm going to kind of cut it off and make it a bust. So we'll just kind of fake it. And then it, this comes way up underneath here and kind of repeats that shape. It's going up in there a little lower. But I want to really widen it out because that's kind of where his, his arms would come out. And clip this off. As if it's mounted to your wall like a taxidermy. <laughs> That'd be fun. Okay. There we go. So now I can kind of understand that I want to make this even wider back here. I want to make it quite wide, I think. Let's merge these together. And we should probably save it. I always save. <laughs> Print it and hang it on the front door for sure. I've thought about doing that with like a dragon bust or something like that. It'd be fun to hang like in a a game room or something like that, you know? 
Let's see here. Twitch. Mitch Gator. You know, I'd probably print it out. If I did, I'd probably print it out with a, a, an extrusion printer because at that at the scale that I would want to print it out, it would cost too much to do it on resin printer. Speaking of resin printer, I have a resin printer on its way. I picked up the um, the new Saturn II 8K printer. I'm really excited to try it out. I'm gonna split this one so I can join all three of these together. I don't wanna join the neck, but I wanna join this one. And I'm just merging them together. Not really anything special. And the reason I wanna merge them together is because I wanna move them all together. So I wanna get this really wide. I'll fix those eyeballs here in a second. Because I don't want it high here, just here. This kind of reminds me of a gator that I did with um, ZBrush Core back in the day. I don't know if any of you have seen that video, but when ZBrush Core first came out, uh, the ZBrush folks reached out to me and asked me if I could do some characters that went from one character to another using Dynamesh. Do you have that link, Neil? Could you, would you mind finding that really quick so I can show you guys? <laughs> Those beautiful eyes, yeah. <laughs> this. There you go. Um, thanks for sharing your skills. Can you cast keys to see what shortcuts you're using? I don't have a key caster on here. Um, I'm looking into a solution for, for a, a Mac that I can use, um, but I, I don't have one yet that I'm happy with. So hopefully soon. Let's see. Hey Thomas, um, wondering, are you fully focused on self-employment like the course and such, or do you still do freelance sometimes? Um, the course is my is my main thing. It takes up m most of my time. It's, I'm super duper busy with that. But I will do the occasional very small freelance job if it makes sense to me. Um, it just depends on what it is and how short it is. I'm, I look for really short ones that I can just kind of move through and move past. And um, So I was helping my friends with a game character um, and I'm helping a friend with a, a, a tree house, like a tree house carved out of a CNC machine, carved out with a CNC machine. So those are the things I'm working on now, just, just for funsies on the side, you know? And I did, um, they interviewed uh, Clackies not too long ago here on the Pixelogic ZBrush Maxon channel. I don't know whether to call them Pixelogic anymore. But here on the ZBrush channel, they interviewed uh, the guys from Clackies, and I, I did some freelance for them, a couple Marvel characters, and that was really fun. And Clackies are keys that you can, uh, if you have a mechanical keyboard, you can replace the keys with these fun little um, custom keys. Let's 
let's see here. Still want to make this. I'm going to make it like more more crocodile-ish, I think, with a wider mouth down here. Just so I can get his lower mouth to be wider. It's got a really interesting head. <laughs> hey, Ian. Yep, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're looking strange right now, but after I get them integrated, hopefully they won't look so weird anymore. Okay. Taxidermy cartoon alligator head is the name of the game today. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to take me a full two hours to, to bust out. We'll see. Make some, some nostrils in a similar fashion. Let's get it turned. Could be an interesting use for my Loa sculpt. What do you mean? I've been using, been learning how to retop lately. I just wanted to ask if one can use ZBrush to get really good retop work. Um, it can do fair, a fairly decent job at it, but um, there are there are better tools out there at the moment. I hope I hope they will add more tools to help out with retopology. I like the new edge extrude in the Z modeler quite a bit. That helps a lot. Um, but you can you can still there's a there's a few things missing. I don't want to go into it very much, but um, that like I would love to be able to smooth out the topology while it's still sticking to the mesh. I use that all the time and uh, just little things like that. So hopefully they'll, they'll add it eventually. That'd be great. I need to talk to him about that actually. So I can give him my recommendations. But I use the retopology tools in ZBrush a lot to um, build things like eyebrows and eyelashes and armor pieces and just things like that. Oh, I see. Yeah, I was struggling to make her mouth look right. Maybe adding that crescent will help. Yeah, it definitely helps. I mean, like, for example, I could totally sculpt these nostrils out, you know, like brute force sculpt them. But, um... Sometimes I just like adding primitive shapes just to help me along, to get me, to help me figure it out. So that's what I decided to do this time. These look like ears right now. I need to lower his neck transition into his head. What do you, what do you say, any Neil? <laughs> Don't forget to mention about adding shadow effects to the brushes. Are you talking sound effects? Hey Yugi, how are, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, I like to make sounds when I'm using brushes. this to go this transition is not my favorite okay so now that I have that I think I'm going to combine this smile piece and the head and the nostrils all together 
but leave this lower jaw separate for a minute. <laughs> yeah, I wish, right? <laughs> if it only worked that way. Okay, so let's apply this dynamic. Thanks, Uab. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Okay, um, let's delete the lower subdivisions. And then I'm going to grab this polygon size slider. Now, people ask me, what is this? What am I doing to this? Because if you see, if I start to slide it, it will start to add kind of this weird geometry to the surface. And it no longer has subdivision levels. Um, and basically what this is, it's, it's called tessimation. And you can find it under the geometry menu, menu under tessimate right here. It's essentially this slider. And all it's doing is it's rebuilding the surface of the geometry with uh, tessimated geometry, which is essentially um, dynamic or Sculptress Pro geometry. You can think about it that way. And I, if you're a, if you've ever painted in oil, a lot of times you will, um, you will put gesso on the surface of your canvas to prep it for the oil paint first. And I kind of think about filling my model with tessimated geometry as prepping the surface of the model to do two things. One, to help me with the stitching, stitching together pieces, and two, to just give me an even surface to sculpt on. I like it a lot better than, uh, than Dynamesh for some reason. I think it doesn't, it, feel, it seems like it doesn't melt or destroy the topology as much as Dynamesh does. I really like Dynamesh, but this is kind of, it, it almost feels like Dynamesh 2.0 in a way. And it'll give me a lot more geometry to work with and then I can sculpt on it and have some fun. Hey, Kayo, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Gesso is used to give it shine? Oh. I'm not sure. Not, yeah, not the gesso that I've used kind of is chalky to give it some tooth for the paint to, to bite to. And it covers the canvas fibers so it doesn't absorb your um, oil paint as much. Okay, so I'm going to try and stitch these together. And I just do it by doing... moving the gizmo down to the center of the world, hitting this gear, clicking on Remesh by Union. I want to check these nostrils to make sure they got stitched. Oh, there's a clear type? Oh, that's a type I'm unaware of. I did not know that. Okay, so I'm gonna hit accept. Um, turn on symmetry, and I'm also gonna mirror and weld this. Just so it's symmetrical. You can see that new line, and now it's symmetrical. Because sometimes tessimation will not um, it will not do symmetry. Okay, so now that I have that, I can start working on it. Hey, what's up, Chris? How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Uh, I should put this Nightbot thing up here. <laughs> Andrew Swift. ISO form and medical illustration. That sounds fun. You know, ZBrush is used in a lot of medical illustration. Surprised how much it's used. I think I want this straighter and just put little, a couple little bumps in it instead of, you know how al alligators and crocodiles have kind of that scaly bumpy skin? I might want to do that. Okay. Hey there, Milland. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. How much are you? I'm doing good, thanks. Um, 
sorry if this has been answered already. I was wondering if people with perpetual license will lose it. No, you you won't lose it. I mean, I don't I don't work for Pixel Logic, so I and, or Maxon. I can't, so I I couldn't tell you a definitive. But if you've purchased a perpetual license, that's yours. It's all about um, purchasing the upgrades whenever they arrive. You won't lose it. Hey there. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Just gonna push this in and start to make kind of these eye eyelids. And I can also, since this is stitched, see right here, I can smooth this out because now it's one piece. It's not stitched to the lower mouth, so I can't do it to the lower mouth, but I can do it to the upper, like so. And squeeze it in a little bit more. And I can also blend in the ends of the nostrils here. Okay, I'm gonna turn on Sculptress Pro so I can give myself a little bit more density through these nostrils if I want. So I'm gonna turn that on right here and I need to go to Stroke and Sculptress Pro and turn off Adaptive Size. That will make it so the triangles are not tied to the brush size and rather they're the, the triangle size is tied to the scene size and these two kind of have a relationship with each other um, the tessimation size is the same as the uh, subdivide size but I like to go a little bit lower and then I can just hit it you can see it's adding dynamic topology just a little more dense around these nostrils just so I have enough to sculpt with And then I can do stuff like mask out this nostril, invert that mask and push it in with a move brush. If I want more depth to that nostril. Clear that mask and I can come in and smooth it and it will add more geometry there. And I can do stuff like shape it, see how it goes from kind of a uh, thick to thin there. kind of smooth it out so it blends in. Something like that. Okay. I want to inflate that just a little bit. Let's turn Sculptress off for a second. Okay, there we go. And for these eyes, I want to I want to make that like eye bag going on around there. You can use this cloth brush that I have. And if you're interested in in trying out these brushes, I give them away for free over on my website, three dcharacterworkshop.com. And I am in the middle of updating that page, so it should change soon. So you can see the brushes e more easily because it's it's down the page. You have to just kind of scroll a little bit before you see the brushes. And I'm going to be making them front and center here in a little bit.
These are this guy's pretty fun. Got some fun shapes, but again, I don't know if it's gonna take me all the way to two hours. <laughs> He's pretty easy. Maybe I'll start to make up his body or something. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. I kind of want, I'm trying to decide if I want these eyeballs to touch or not. I think I might try it. Just pull these back until the eyes touch. That's kind of a fun look. And let's round out this eye cavity here. And let's continue this um, eye, this lower eyelid kind of up and around here. Comics. Um, will the 3D character workshop brushes break when there is a max? It, they shouldn't. Um, I mean, it's the same crew working on ZBrush. I mean, they have a little help with from Maxon's programmers. I don't know how much help. Um, but for every single update, since I think when I first started making these brushes, it was like four, well, it was like version, the end of version three, I think is when I first made them. And they've worked for every single um, version after that. The brushes don't really change. It's the, you know, cause it's the brush engine, but the user interface has changed throughout the years as they've updated because they've added some things that I really enjoy like for example, this knife lasso brush, if they add some brushes in there that I like and I add to my user interface, then I'll add them and then you know, you can go download the latest user interface that I've updated myself. Because this is essentially the user interface and the brushes that I use for my characters and I just share them. So you can play with basically the same setup that I have, you know? And it's a place to start. It's not intended for, you know, the end all or anything, it's just, to give you some ideas of what you can do with it. Yeah, let's get this guy. Should we, I kind of want to color, color his head and find a color, even though this is a kind of a black and white image. Let's, let's choose a color here. Um, let's see. No, 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 no. Too light. Let's go more on the yellow green, maybe. There we go. That's something like that. Maybe a little darker on the top. <laughs> he kind of does look like a Hanna Barbera, doesn't he? Hanna Barbera character. Maybe a little lighter, a little less saturation. Yeah, there we go. And then down underneath, I'm kind of wanting to take it lighter and a little more saturated. Yeah, something like that. And actually, let's see. So, um, let's see. I don't know if I can grab that color. So if you don't have an object filled with a color, it just takes on whatever color is in the swatch over here, but it darkens it because if you have several objects that don't have color, it's going to tell you which object you have selected. Um, for example, if I have these eyes selected, they're going to turn a little lighter. If I have the neck selected, it's going to turn a little lighter and the eyes will go darker. But if you have an object filled with color, then it's not going to change at all because you've filled it. So, um, yeah, that's a little, little side note there. Let's find a color for these eyes. Let's make them yellow, like a yellow, green, yellow, something like that. That works. Okay. And then, uh, this neck, I'm just going to fill it with the same color and then I'll take this, this lighter color and just kind of paint it back on this belly a little bit. 
But um, the color inside of ZBrush is poly paint, and it's actually vertex coloring, which means it's coloring the little dots that make up the surface of the object. So these dots, and you can see since this is so low resolution, we don't have that many dots to paint with. So if I were to grab my paintbrush and this color and try to paint it, well, actually I have sculptors turned on. <laughs> so if I try to paint it, it's gonna be very loose like this. It's not gonna be a nice tight, tight line because there's not enough resolution to hold the color. So eventually I can either use Sculptress Pro to give myself more resolution to hold a tight line through here, or I can subdivide it later or something like that. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. But for now, I'll just keep it kind of rough and not care about it too much. Yeah. There we go. Okay, that's gonna work for now. And I think it's really gonna come into play when he starts to uh, get his teeth going. And I wanna integrate his mouth into his smile. I'm gonna actually open his mouth. So the workflow is poly paint UV then bake. Um, if, if you're doing a game character or a film character, yes. So you would do poly paint, then retopology, then UVs, then bake. <laughs> so you want to retop, you don't want to use this as your, as your game mesh. This is just your high resolution mesh. Like a trumpet, like from uh, Princess Frog or whatever that movie's called. For sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's see here. Let's, uh, yeah, I'll, I want to kind of work through this area. Let's use this Move Infinite. Open this up. And I'll combine these eventually. But for now, I, I kind of wish I didn't weld this piece to this piece. I wasn't paying attention. Um... Hey, comics. A while back you mentioned you were going to paint your 3D prints using an airbrush. Uh, did you ever get around to doing it? Not yet. It's still... I've, I've just gotten so swamped with other things, I, I haven't. But yeah, it's still, it's still something I very much want to do. I have, I have so many projects. Just, I got to do it. <laughs> okay. I might just integrate this sooner rather than later so I can start working this area out. Come on, grab it. Okay. So, yeah, I kind of broke that, this area up a little bit. I'm going to have to, let's stitch it and fix it. Stitch and fix. Okay. Yeah, our next How It's Made stylized tank. I'm not sure if, um, I'm not sure if Ian fixed that or not. But that's a really good series if you're wanting to learn some hard surface stuff in ZBrush. Hey, Wilberth, how are you doing? Can make this a little, a little bit bigger. 
There we go. Thank you very much. Getting there. It's only been 45 minutes. <laughs> I think I'm gonna I'm gonna run out of character before I run out of time. Okay, I'm gonna take this, and the reason why it's really great to have these uh, separate um, is because then I can go in here and do the in mouth interior. Hello from Europe, Hungary. Hello, welcome. So I can solo this. Goodness, what did I just do? Okay, accidentally mounted the transform menu over there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm since I have these nice edge loops, um, I'm gonna do this select lasso and hide one of these edge loops. Do an auto groups. Hide these, I just wanna make that its own poly group. And then use my Z modeler brush, speaking of Z modeler. Hovering over a face, pushing space bar, clicking extrude, poly group all. Um, so within the Z modeler, this is your action and this is your target. And this is some different modifiers you can do to that target with that action. But I just want to extrude this whole polygroup area in. So I'm just going to push that on down. And then use my gizmo to push it the rest of the way. Whoop. Need to mask it off first. There we go. Maybe I don't want it that deep. Maybe like this. Okay, that should be good. And now this, this upper portion does not have good topology. It's just a, a Sculptress Pro version. So with that, I, just, I only wanna push it up in a little bit. I can just use mask and just mask it out like this. And then when I have something I, I'm, I'm liking, I just hit Control W. That will put all of those in its own poly group. And I can use, again, I can extrude it if I want to, or I can just mask it off and then reset my gizmo so it's even with the world and just push it up in there. Now it does give an ugly jagged edge. You can see that. And to fix that, what you need to do is clear the mask, turn Sculptress Pro back on, and then just come through here and smooth it out. I can turn my Sculptress Pro density up a little bit so it's not so dense. That'll give me a smoother result. Turn this off so you can see. Looks like we have a hole right there. Sometimes you'll get these little holes here and there. You can fix them a few ways. Um, you can go to close holes like this, and it should close it up and smooth it out. There it goes. Or I can use a mirror and weld to just mirror it. There's another hole right there. There we go. Okay, so you can see how these are separated. And I can actually smooth it down until it does separate. That's another hole. Man, that made a lot of holes. So, hey, Andy Roo, welcome. Like the name? Okay, I'm trying to decide what I want to do with this. If I want to separate it, like just cut it until I have this narrow bit and then um, smooth it away. Hey Adam, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no space for the brain on this one. <laughs> Brainless alligator. Yeah, it's not having a good time going through here. 
But this is the beauty of dynamic topology is I can just kind of Armstrong it till it separates till I have kind of two separate pieces. Just keep this is the detail brush that I have as part of my brush set. It's essentially just the Damien standard brush with some some tweaks to it. It started life out as the Damien standard brush <laughs> and then got tweaked. Okay. There we go. Now, because I want to get this valley, this cut going all the way up to the corner of the mouth is why I'm doing that. Let's see if I can get that. Maybe smaller. It's too quick. Let's see. Turn down my intensity on my smooth brush here. There we go. That's what I was after. It's funny, the neck, the neck is sticking through the head. You can see it on the inside right there. So using that infinite move, I'm just going to push that neck back into it, or the extra geometry back in there so we don't see it. Probably far enough. All right. I want to make the uh, tip of his nose bigger. Give him more character that way. Can I bring this down? And I really like the idea of the underbite. So I'm gonna pull this bottom lip out around everything. And once I get all the teeth in place, then I'll kind of sculpt. You can't really see it here. The only one you can really see it on is this front one right here but I kind of want to give them all the teeth uh, a home, like a place to live in the gums. Because you know how alligators and crocodiles, they have the, the teeth embedded in the sides of their mouths. So, Dara, hello, welcome. Okay. Take a little break for a second. Drink some water. All right. Does anyone have any questions as we're going along here? The difference between alligators and crocodiles, and there's a third one too. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Um, but crocodiles tend to have a wider snout. Alligators have a much narrower snout. That's the easiest way to tell the difference between them. I want to open these up a little bit more. Round them out. Saving up for the 3D character workshop as a Christmas gift to myself. Ah. The knowledge from the course will put me in a high league here in South Africa. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Well, I can't wait to have you in there. Do you worry about keeping your poly groups when Sculptures Pro? Uh, it depends on what I'm doing. You know, if there's a reason to, I will. But typically, no. Um, I'll just kind of let them go. Thank you. Yeah, the Cayman Croc Crocodilus is the third. Yep, the Cayman. That's it. 
Thank you. Okay. I want to give him some I some pupils early so he has some personality early. I usually save that till the end, but let's do a a super dark green and just get some pupils in there. Nick, uh, Mitch just barely came out with a brand new book on how to draw birds. I almost sculpted one of them today, but then I'm like, I don't want to sculpt a bird today. <laughs> Feathers are crazy. Let's see. Split on mass points. Go down. Let me make them a little more cross-eyed because it's funny. And one of them bigger than the other one again because it's funny funny is funny Let's see here I know part of that's perspective but I also want him to have some some character Yo would you mind popping up uh, Mitch's uh, Patreon Give Mitch a good shout out. You scoped it in a chicken yesterday. It came out looking really angry. You know, the easiest way to make something look angry is to just, it's, it's like a subtle thing in the brows. It's so, it's so easy to make them look angry. So for example, like this, this uh, alligator, right? If I wanted to make him angry, he kind of has it going right now, but basically all I have to do is pull it in front of the eyes and he'll look and pull this down a little bit more. And he gets really angry really fast. Especially if his um, eyebrows touch his pupils. Then he gets really angry really fast. <laughs> anyway. Hey, Hip Hop. Uh, is this for Doctor? I don't know what Doctari is, sorry. Lean and mean, yep. Mean chicken. Chickens can be mean. That's a fact. Okay, let's see here. I want to color the inside of that mouth. The dark, a dark green. I'm trying to think if I want to do, in, introduce some pinks or reds in there or not. Um... I mean, this is a little too early to color him before he's stitched together, but I might do that just for fun to see. How do you approach sculpting inside of the mouth? Um, well, if you watch the stream earlier, um, I keep the parts, the objects separate so I can get in there. Or you can also polygroup them separate so you can hide one half of the head or the jaw and get in there and sculpt it out. Oh, yeah, just ask Link about angry chickens. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Okay. Hey, what's up, Brad? How you doing? Thank you, sir. Let's see what he looks like with dark, dark green mouth interior. Yeah, see that could work. Or a pink would work. Yeah, it just depends. Clarence the cross-eyed lion. I don't think I've seen that one. Nice. Oh, loving the course 2.0, by the way. Oh, I'm so glad. Thanks for letting me know. I just put up a new lesson today in 2.0 um, about flow and silhouette you should check out. 
It's in the uh, block out section. Okay, let's add some teeth so he's not so gummy. Meh, meh, meh. <laughs> okay, let's do one of these. Let's do the, the up, up ones first. We'll do it symmetrically until we get to the end, then we'll do some asymmetrical ones. Now this is kind of a little too dense for my liking. I'm just gonna take a sphere. Doctari, almost like Flipper. <laughs> I don't know if I'm as, I, when was it released? Like what year did, was that out? And is it, uh, was it released in the US or only in the UK or where is it from? Tell me more. It's an American family drama series that aired on CBS between 66 and 69. See, I wasn't, I was born till 71. So that was, yeah, that was before my time. I mean, they could have been playing some uh, reruns in my childhood, but I, I can't remember that. Yeah, 66, wow. There you go. Thanks, thanks, Neil. Okay. I was in the time of like Hanna Barbera was mostly the cartoons and things that were out, like uh, Flintstones, Jetsons, Scooby Doo, uh, Laugh Olympics, all that stuff. And what's interesting is I actually was able to learn from an old Hanna-Barbera animator in, in school. The Art Institute of Seattle that I went to hired him. He was retired, but he, he had a lot of good information. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> Okay, let's see, I need to split this off. I'm not too far away from that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with these teeth, I'm just gonna kind of float them right here and then I'll go and sculpt the, uh, the gums up and around them and push through them. And let's do the move brush with AccuCurve on, then I can get them really pointy. Shrink them down a little bit, maybe like that. Okay. Oh man, yeah, you know, you know what really floored me about the old Tom and Jerry cartoons was the music. Like they had a literal symphony playing during that entire, the, in the entire cartoon show. And it just, as a kid, you don't really understand, or, or, you know, it's just what it is. But as you get older, it's just like, oh my gosh, that is so much work that's gone into that, you know? Just blows my mind. Okay, I'm seeing now that I need to, I need to do some more work on these lips to make them follow this a little better. So let me get, let me use this color and fill them first. Yeah, all the gestures, the, the, the motion, the gags, even though they weren't always the most PC back then, you know, <laughs> even though it was hilarious. Thomas! <laughs> down. 
That's a better, better silhouette there. When I visited my family, I noticed my nephews were still watching old reruns of Scooby Doo. Oh yeah, they are still relevant for sure. They're uh, they're good. Okay, let's pull it down like this. Whoops. Hey Camille, how are you? Um, is your tape tool available somewhere to download and purchase? Are you talking about my ruler? This, the, the ruler file? Yes, it is. So this ruler file right here that comes with this ruler that you can measure for 3D printing and stuff like that. Um, it is avail for, available for download over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can check that out. It's about, it's about halfway down the page. Yeah, thanks for asking. Okay, so I'm going to auto group these. And then, do I want to do that? You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to mask them off. And hit Control W to put them in their own poly group. Since they're separate objects, it makes it easy to do. The later ones were missing frame rate or something. I didn't really like the choppy ones. I'm Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were saving on animation time, like animating on, on like threes and fours. I don't know how that would work or if it would work. Because typically animation is done on either ones. So there's a frame, there's a, there's a frame, like a drawing every single frame. That's for fast motion or they're on twos and that's the typical. So, and then film, film is at 24 frames per second. So that would take 12 drawings for every second of animation. And video is 30 frames per second or like 29 point blah. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. So I don't know how they they do uh, straight straight to digital television animations if they still do 24 frames per second and then just convert it or what. I haven't done any of that. They used they've used a black image between the fr I've not heard of that. Interesting. Let's see here. Couple up here. You like his squinty eyes? I mean his little eyes? <laughs> I think I might make his eyes a little a little smaller. teeth and put them right there and then duplicate them and shrink them down making teeth are fun let's flip these upside down Yeah, these will be going down from the top here. Hello, Augustine. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. 
Welcome to the stream. Let's see. I'm gonna make this wider. Uh, Yeah, also, Neil, with that restream bot gone, I can't tell how many people are watching anymore. This is not the first time you've used an image for Mitch. Oh, not at all. I've, I've modeled a lot of his stuff. Yeah, he, I like, I, I really like his character design sensibilities, so I model his stuff quite a bit. Where is that not? There we go. <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the wiki entry. <laughs> Able to replace each other with eighty of their teeth up to fifty times in their teeth. Whew. They're kind of like uh, sharks do that too, right? They go through teeth like a bunch. They're expendable. Okay, now we can do uh, auto groups, turn off local, do a mirror and weld. Symmetrical, now I can go through and kind of. Well, I think I might stitch this together, then Z remesh it, and then work through the teeth. That's what I'll do. All right, a little breaky, breaky break. Adjust this, these lower eyelids a little bit. All right. And then I'll put these, all the details in later when I'm done. And his little, uh, his little back fin there. Okay, so. Yeah, I might have been too quick with the teeth, but we'll get there. Let's save it. Always save your work, people. Okay. Like I said, I want to open his mouth a little bit more. So I make sure they're absolutely not touching up here. At which point we've lost his magical abilities. <laughs> hey, Prashan, hello, welcome. Another night bot thing. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna apply the dynamic, delete the lower, do the same to the neck. And then I want to fill this one, let's see, 0.4, let's go 0.4. And this one, 0.4. Okay, and I'm gonna merge them together. Hey, welcome, doing good, thanks. Okay, so we got the upper, the lower, the teeth, the eyes, and then the necks clear down here. So let's move that up here. Merge down, merge down. And we are good, okay. So now that we have all these pieces in one subtool, we can merge them together, but I wanna make sure, I just wanna 
grab this guy. The move brush. And just kind of pull it in a little bit. Okay, and I don't really care about groups. All I care about is the um, the volume. So, okay, let's stitch this together. Again, it's underneath the gizmo. So go to the gizmo. I usually send the gizmo to home, which is zero zero down here, by holding down Alt or Option and clicking on this home button and then resetting the gizmo here, clicking on this, and then clicking on Remesh by Union, which will stitch all the pieces together. And you can check the seams to make sure they're good. The reason I like this method so much is because it does not rebuild your mesh. It only rebuilds the parts where the stitch happens. See the stitch between these two pieces? And it will also get rid of the interior geometry, just like Dynamesh does. But Dynamesh will rebuild your entire mesh and it will kind of have this melting effect on it. So you would, um, there's a chance you would lose some of your details, like some of these cuts and things you'd lose. So that's why I like it so much. And then hit accept. Okay, turn on symmetry and we can hide the floor. It does get, uh, let's see, I was gonna say it does get rid of your color, but hey, what's up, Jared, how are you? Yeah, man, throwing down the secrets. See, look at this, Jared, check it out. And it also keeps your seams. So this is stitched. See these two pieces? Look at that hard edge. And what's cool is um, now, yeah, I accidentally stumbled upon this once because essentially what it is, it's like doing a live Boolean without doing any Booleans. It's the same operation. You know how if you put a bunch of um, objects in a folder and you run the Boolean operation and it just kind of stitches everything together with the Booleans. Yeah, this is the same thing, but without doing any Boolean stuff. Um, yeah, I was just playing around with the, all the options inside the gizmo one day and I'm like, hey, that's cool. And I never look back. So um, basically what's awesome is I can come in here and uh, smooth this stitch out as far as I want. See, I can, keep, I can keep some of the hard edge and I can smooth it out. Let me turn on Sculptress though. See, I'm, I'm basically adding Sculptress. Uh, let's go a little tighter. Yeah, sure, that's good, okay. So now I can smooth this out. But if I wanted to keep this tight seam down here, I could, you know, and just kind of blend it. Pretty nice. Um, I wish that ZBrush Core would be update to include Remesh by Union. Yeah, it's ZBrush Core is just meant to be a very light version of ZBrush to play with. Uh, so possibly. Let's blend all this down. How have you been anyway, Jared? If you guys haven't seen Jared's work, you should check it out. He does some amazing stuff. Hello from Ukraine. Hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Usually lurking. <laughs> oh, that's all good, man. I hope they do a Zebra Summit this year so we can hang out. I haven't heard either way. Okay, I'm just going to blend this and then paint. What's cool about Sculptus Pro is, is you can paint with it and it holds on to the, the tightness of the, of the edges. See, if you had a, 
if if you had a mesh that was very low resolution and you weren't using Sculptus Pro, just like back here, it wouldn't it wouldn't hold the the paint tight because you wouldn't have enough points. But now that I'm using dynamic topology with Sculptress Pro, it's it, it has enough density that I can paint really you know, not not super tight edges, but tight enough that I'm happy with it. You know. And then I can blend this out if I wanted to. Here, let's turn it where I can get a good angle on it. So um, it also works with smoothing. You can smooth out paint and blend it just a little bit, like through here. Blend that transition a little bit. And if you don't want dynamic topology on your smooth brush, just turn smooth off, but leave RGB on. You can turn Z add off and it will just blend the color if you, if you only want to blend the color. There we go. Again, I don't want to ruin my sculpt. I just want to blend the color up in here. Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about ZBrush Summit yet. But I really miss it, so I'm hoping I'm hoping they bring it back this year. Well, ZBrush subdivisions, Wilbur, ZBrush subdivisions, those are those are going to get you the tightest edges. So that's not that's not wrong to do, um, but it's it's it is an option to do. Whoa, it is an option to do with sculptress, you know. Let's go, Ziad. I'm trying to just smooth this out. Hey, Chris. Oh, you're going this year? If they have, awesome. That'd be great. That'd be great. Okay, now I'm going to try something. Well, yeah. I was going to Z remesh this pretty soon. I do want to kind of, I love that fat jaw. So I wanted to fatten it up a little bit more. I used to go to the summit every single year. Um, it was like a family reunion because all my ZBrush friends are there from all over the world. I can't believe how many people come in from different countries to attend. And I've made good friends with a lot of them. And yeah, it's just, it was painful not to have that the last two years, you know? including, you know, my friends, the, the owners of, of ZBrush, like Paul Gabry and those guys. It's always nice to see them. And they, in the past, they've held it at the Noman School. So Al Alex Alvarez, the guy who owns Noman, he's really fun to hang out with. Were you saying as you transition to Z remesh? I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess up. I'll I'll re I'll reorganize these teeth once I Z remesh, and I'll probably blend uh, this this out. But we'll see. Okay, let's try it. So uh, I'm gonna duplicate this Z remesh. Now this is one mistake that I see my students making over and over and over again. Z remesh is not meant to hold the detail. It's only meant to hold the volume of your original shape of your character. 
So don't try and crank up the resolution so high that you're trying to keep the detail of this and this. That's not, that's not what Ziri Mesh is for. Ziri Mesh is to, um, and I wanna get a shirt that says this, but the cleanest mesh you'll ever find or ever create is a low resolution subdivided mesh. That's like, you should, you should brand that into your brain. Okay, so for example, let's do let's Z remesh this. And the best is a retopologized low resolution mesh if you're going to animate it. Okay, so if I was gonna make this character into an animated character, I would take this somewhere like Maya or something like that, um, Cinema 4D, wherever I can do retopology, take it out, retopologize it, then do UVs and then um, transfer the detail from one to the other. Okay, so let's do it. <clears throat> let's see, uh, zero mesh, sure, let's do, let's do 10. This 10 represents thousands. So I'm gonna try 10,000 and see what it gives us. Good time to take a drink. Hey there, Chris. Welcome. Oh, you. S sorry, you didn't finish typing it out. Probably. How do you feel out when to Z remesh from DynaMesh? I struggle DynaMesh continually having artifacts and Z remesh are using details. So yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I'll show you here in a second. Have you got to play in Cinema 4D yet? Not yet. I'm I'm slowly learning it. Hey, did new digital sculptor. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. That looks great. Oh, thanks. So um, I did do it high enough. So this is too dense for me. But I like to start high and then start to cut down on the density. So that'll give me a better result. I learned this from Joseph Trust. Um, so start high with your Ziri meshed mesh and then click on half and do it in Ziri mesh again. So in theory, that should take it from 10,000. So it, it, it ended up being about 20,000. So it does its best. It's more of a guide than a absolute. So um, if I do, uh, let's see. So if I do half, Z remesh, not bad, do it again. See, it keeps getting lower. Now it's 6,000. See, 6,200. That's actually close to where I want it to be. I'm gonna try it one more time and see if it destroys it. Not too bad. See that that's starting to drop not as much, so it's about five, five and a half. Um that's pretty good. Okay, so now that I'm here, I want to get my detail back. And that's why I duplicated my mesh. See, I have my original here, has all the detail, and here's my new mesh here. So now what I'm gonna do is Let's hide these teeth and the eyes and the pupils. So I just have this. And this is not, don't get me wrong, this is not a animatable mesh. I mean, you can rig it, you could animate it. It's just not optimal, okay, for animation or deformation. You could, you could it's just not optimal. Okay, so um, let's take this and subdivided a couple times with real subdivision levels. So I'm hitting control D rather than just D. And then I'll show the original and then I will project it. Let's project this down, project all. Yes, I want to keep 3D prints um, and 3D printing. No, 3D printing you can do whatever you want with. You can do, um, you could, you could leave it in Sculptrist. You could leave it in dynamic topology because it's essentially that's what it's gonna end up being anyway. Hey Pedro, how are you? Um, what would make it more optimal? You mean for animation? Um, just better flow of polygons. Don't forget that you can use the new fancy Z history project. I have not used that as much as I need to. Okay, so you look around for issues. There's 
we have issues. It looks like there's, hold on a minute. Looks like we have um, symmetry issues. So let me, let's fix that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to, um, before I subdivided it. Okay, that's before subdivisions. And then mirror it, mirror and weld it without symmetry. Turn. Okay, and then let's go to this one. And mirror and weld this one. Okay, so they should both be symmet symmetrical now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, ingrown hair behind the ears. That little, yeah, that little white. So um, essentially, again, I'll click on this one. Show the original, subdivide it once, project it. So I can project each level, each subdivision level if I want to. Subdivide again, project again. Each time I project it, it's going to get, take longer and longer time because there's more and more information that it has to project. But this way is safer because it won't give me those pockets of uh, missed geometry. See, now it's... It has no issues. Okay, so I'm gonna subdivide it again. I go up to about a million or so. Um, let's see, project it. But since he's got spots, if I wanted to paint these spots, I'll probably have to subdivide one more time just to get the poly paint looking good. So I'm gonna do that one more time up to 5.66 million. And project that that'll be the last one so this is um, this is how you would do the same thing with Dynamesh so you would just duplicate it Z remesh it subdivide it project it in that order okay um, will the stream stay on the channel yes it will it will stay on um, pixel logic uh, YouTube channel Yeah, it's, it's a lot more controlled. Yep. So now I can hide the original. And it will also project some of the um, Sculptress Pro stuff that I don't... See all this? This is projected. Okay, so... I can go down in subdivision levels and smooth it out basically, because I this is real subdivision levels now. Okay, so I can just go through here and just clean all this up because it'll clean up really nicely. Um, let's see, sorry I'm, I'm off topic, but I'm trying to repair my mesh with 3D Builder. I'm not sure what 3D Builder is, and it repairs it, but it also lowers the resolution of my mesh. Maybe you're experiencing a similar problem. Uh, yeah, tell me what 3D Builder is, and I'll try and help you. Okay. So I am going to transition and smooth this out here, this color. Smooth this color out. And now I have subdivision levels, so I can go up and down the subdivision levels, creating detail on the higher levels and smoothing out stuff on the lower ones. And then I can um, unhide my teeth, eyes, and pupils. Yeah, I love, I love Mitch's concepts. Okay, so let's, um, I'm gonna close his mouth now. Let's go to the lowest subdivision level. What I can do is hold control and drag it down the, um, the lower mouth since it has this big gap here and it'll just mask that off right there. And I can blur it a little bit more and then rotate it up into place and move it. 
There we go. Um, what is the shortcut key to go up and down in subdivision levels? I've forgotten, and I've just been going to the menu to do it. Um, it's shift D and D once you have subdivision levels um, in, you know, mo once you have the subdivision levels on your character. You should be awarded most live streams. <laughs> yeah, I do have a lot. I think, I don't even know how many I have. 200 and something, I think. So if you want to watch me create characters from past you know, from past streams, you can go check out my, uh, the, just, I, I think search for Shane Olson ZBrush and you'll find them all. There's a playlist of most of them. So, um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Let me see if, let me see if I can show you some of the recent ones. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Neil. Okay, let's see. Da -na 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 -na. Sorry, I'm gonna look for them really quick if I can. CD. There it is. Goodness, where did it go? Okay, so recently, here. I can't see the little thumbnails. Goodness sakes. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of your recent ones. Gonna help me when I get ZBrush in September. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay, sorry, bear with me one second. I found them, but I just need to Open them up here. Uh, renders. So this is one, well, that's it. This one. This is one I did recently. So this, you can watch, watch back and I make this guy from start to finish. I don't show the render of him because I rendered him somewhere else, but as far as taking him from start to finish inside a ZBrush, you can watch me do that. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, yeah, I don't know where I put the other one. Okay. Oh, I just popped the other one up on ArtStation. So this is my ArtStation. Um... I built this cowboy during the live stream and this pic this pirate girl during the live stream and the smoking guy, well, and the the tentacle head girl. But this is a, one of the more recent ones that I did. He was a lot of fun. And yeah, you can find the live stream here that I did of him. And I, I don't make these um, typically for for animation. I typically make them for like 3D printing or just rendering out. Um, that's that's the idea. Okay. So you can go visit those and check them out. All right. So let's work on let me just check these teeth out. I just kind of want to put put a place for these teeth to live on the on the jaw here. Okay. Yeah, so just subtle, something like that. And then here, just kind of push it in. Um. I was wondering if Sculptress Pro is a paid add-on or does it come with ZBrush? It comes with ZBrush. The full version of ZBrush. Hey, Overton, how are you? <laughs> it's been a while, man. It's been a while. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, let's see. 
I might pull these teeth out. You feel just gonna kind of push this in to make them so they clear a little better. So I'm not having to push them so far. And then I'm going to put like one right here just to break up the symmetry. And you can use inflate and you can use the inverse inflate. So you can hold down option or alt and push it in. Okay, these teeth I'm going to raise up. There we go. Time we got. Okay. I thought I would uh, have more time than I needed. I'm almost done with them. I was like, I'm gonna be done with nothing to do. But it's turned out pretty good time-wise. I like to pick characters that I can do in a session or two. I am thinking about um, live streaming over on my own channel. My own channel is 3D Character Workshop. If you wanna pop over there. I don't know why you would wanna subscribe at this point. Well, I do, I do know why. If you wanna know when I do go live, you can subscribe and you'll get notified if you hit that hit that little bell, I guess. <laughs> I guess that's how it works on the YouTubes. Hey Unstable, how's it going? Nice, I like that icon. Hey Zach, how are you? Um, what do you think about sculpting stylized houses and or cars in ZBrush? It's funny you ask that because as a freelance project, I'm doing that right now. Well, not right now, but you know, right, right this week, I'm working on uh, sculpting a stylized treehouse in ZBrush. And uh, I, I like it a lot um, because you can get some really, it's, it's really just digital sculpting, you know, building it out. The only thing that's a little rough with ZBrush is you don't get precise measurements like you would in say a CAD program or something like that. Um, but it depends on what the, what the object is that you're sculpting. Um, if it's like a cartoon boat or house or something like that, really stylized and pushed, then it's just fine because then you can use your sculpting brushes to move stuff around and warp things. Um, I've actually thought about making some stylized cartoony furniture, like warped desks and things like that that look very cartoony. So, loving the 2.0 class, by the way. Oh, thanks. Don't have anything I want to post in the community yet, but new opening blockout week rules. Nice. Well, thank you for the feedback. I love it. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so I'm going to get some of these... Uh, these Thanos lines <laughs> going down here. I just want to keep them subtle though. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to use a detail brush. Here, let's save it. Okay, and then I'll save out a version. And might as well just duplicate this subtool for fun. And we'll try one of these lines and see. Yeah, I kind of like that. I was thinking about either doing this or doing a pinch, like this pinch brush. See, pinch is different because it, it actually makes these little peaks on the on either side of it, which is good, but it takes a little extra work to uh, smooth those out. So I think I'm just going to leave it with the detail brush, just be subtle about it. Yeah, that works. Just enough to catch the light, you know? 
This still looks like an ear to me and it's driving me crazy. A little earish. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and fix that. I'm feeling a little earish. Plus he's got this little bit of skin underneath this. Been working a bit with Funko lately. Nice. I didn't know that, Overton. Very, very cool. That was great watching you work. That's great, man. Overton is another amazing student of mine. Thanks for letting me know. That's really cool. Love those success stories. Let's do build that up a little bit, and that's probably too much. I love once I get subdivision levels because then I can go up and down in subdivision levels and just kind of uh, push things around. So 51% muscle, 49% ear. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Helping him design a decent George Clinton. Well, they got the right person to do it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, you might be right. Just that, the way the paint line is. Let me see if I can do something about that. Um, let's crank this intensity. There we go. They have the most minimal style I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, for sure, right? It's like they give you that base and then you're like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? I think Zit Zitimus, that helps. I don't know if that's it, how you say your name properly, sorry. get that transition to melt in there a little bit more. That's feeling a little more like a mouth. It's fictional. So a question for you guys, and I don't know if I've asked you this before. I think I've asked a couple of my students this before, but like I said, I'm thinking about streaming a little more on my own channel and I'm trying, I, I'm struggling really hard with what format the videos should be in and what I should kind of cover. Um, Cause I can do tips and tricks. That's not a big deal, but I want to make more characters and I want to make more full characters start to finish. And I'm trying to decide if I, if I want to do them live or if I want to re pre-record them. And I feel like I'm kind of in my element when I'm live like this. And then I would just take those videos and then make a whole bunch of different videos out of them, like, um, like shorts and maybe even TikToks or whatever. 
just little or or time lapses, you know. Um, but at the same time, it kind of binds me to a time where I have to stream every week, you know, a certain time. And if I'm just recording my characters, I can just do it whenever, right? Like if I feel like sculpting late at night, I can just do it. Um, because with live streaming, you typically want to sculpt on a schedule like I do with this, you know, every Monday I'm live. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to decide like, do I pre-record it and then not talk and then do a voiceover and speed up some parts, like explain some things and speed up some thing? I don't know. Um, I'm just wondering, would you guys even be interested in that stuff? Yeah, Neil Neil is saying uh, he said do a bit do a bit of both, some pre-recorded and throw in some live here and there. Um, please tell me when your course will update. What updates are you specifically looking for? Yeah, Anastasia, that, that is in the plans. Cool, cool. Okay, like... I like how we can interact with you in your live. Yeah, it does it does make it feel like I'm not sculpting by myself. And I'm not I'm not stopping live sculpting here on Mondays. All right, I'm doing well. Thanks. Um those voiceover tutorials can be tedious because of the non-continuity. Yeah. Um, and then there's, there's, you know, where I don't talk at all. It's just like a sort of a time lapse put to music. Are any of you guys interested in watching those? Oh, yes to all. I'd love to see some theory talks on analyzing concept art, like how you pick a good starting point. Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. A little of both would be epic. If it's pre-recorded, I can't ask stupid questions on the fly. <laughs> Yeah. So the the thing with live is it's it's hard to edit and chop up like this, you know, what I'm the conversation I'm having with you guys right now, it's hard to cut that out and make it, you know, good for YouTube. So Really like your work. I'm learning a lot from your streams. Thanks. Next time make a cute girl in the style of Dreamworks or Disney. I have made that before if you want to kind of wa watch some of the older ones, but yeah, those are that's my favorite thing to scope, so you'll most likely see more. Um, I prefer the live streams or at least some voiceover in real time explaining why things are done the way they are. Yeah, yeah. So I was thinking about doing them. Have you ever seen like um, some YouTube videos or like, um, like when I watch, um, like say a mechanic building a, like a, a, a fabricator building a car, they will explain what they're going to do and then they'll, ti they'll time lapse them doing it. You know, they'll explain the different things that they have to go through to, to achieve what they're going to do. But then the, you don't just sit and watch them live because it would be like a, a 12 hour or more stream. Right. And if a full character would take that, it would take a, a lot of hours and I don't want to live stream all of those hours. So I was thinking about just, you know, just explaining what I'm going to do, then speed it up like while I'm doing it so you can watch me do it but I'm not gonna sit and yap the entire time. Uh, that kind of a thing. That's, I think that's the golden zone, but I, I wanted to get a little feedback from you guys and see what you thought. Yeah, full character takes, it takes like three weeks. That'd be three weeks of, of live, you know, doing it live. But I do like Neil's idea of, you know, maybe I'll stop once in a while and do a live stream of me working on a certain bit, you know, that might work out. Focusing on specific tools, um, I, I can. But essentially, when I'm doing something specific that requires a specific tool, um, but those would be more in the tips and tricks kind of a thing. I do have. If you go over to 3D Character Workshop YouTube channel right now, you'll see a few little videos that I've dabbled with. Like one of them, I talk about the curve, um, how to get a precise curve. 
uh, that people liked and how to use the chisel brush that people liked. I'll be doing more of those for sure. But I'm talking about like full characters, that kind of thing. Okay, let's get some spots on this guy really quick. Just for the funsies, we have about five minutes left. Love them, thanks. Okay. Yeah, have you ever seen those like I, I get I don't know why I get enthralled with those like toy repair videos you know like it shows they don't talk at all they just kind of show what this rusty old toy looked like and then they kind of walk you through visually how they restore it like how they sand down the metal and sandblast it and use the different parts and things those I just love to watch those things and I don't know if now let's make this a little darker. There we go. I, you know what? I just realized I didn't, um, I didn't make his little scale in the back. I can make that really fast. Let's get something that doesn't have subdivision levels like these eyeballs. And just grab one, whoops. Hide that. Split, 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 split. Excited for the channel post. Thanks. Yeah, I'll be. That's uh, I got some big plans. Speaking of dumb questions, do you know if there's a hot key for the solo button? Um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. I don't think it has one. You can set one up for sure, really easily. But I don't know if it has one. It's a true earless croc. Yeah, you should make the, the... Don't crocs have like ear holes like lizards? The solo button does not have one overton, but you have to assign... Yep, that's okay. That's what I thought. Thanks, Neil. Okay, so here's a trick. I'm going to use the knife, knife lasso or the knife curve tool. And basically, I'm going to put this into the shape of the scale using this move infinite brush and with AccuCurve turned on and just make it kind of tall like so. Yep, yep, okay. And then I love these new brushes. They're under B, K and the knife curve, the knife lasso. I actually have the knife lasso out on my user interface right here, but I tend to use the knife curve brush <laughs> He has a knife. Yeah. <laughs> so um, here, let's turn on the, the background just so I can see how thick this is. But I can, um, yeah, AccuCurve, it's just, it changes the profile to a point. So it's, a, it's pointier instead of round. So I can pull that up to a point. Okay, it's fairly new. And so are these knife brushes. These are fairly new. Now I want to get a thick to thin on this. So I'm gonna change the camera to one side just a little bit and then run a cut right down, just off center and down, boom, and cut it just like that. And there we go. There's our thin, thin, thin scale, whatever you wanna call it. Scale it on down, shove it in there. And I can also uh, do a quick, let's do a mirror and weld on it and then uh, add some creased poly groups. And then Z remesh it while keeping groups and turning smooth groups down to zero. Boom. 
I'm going to crease the polygroups again. I'm going kind of fast, sorry. And then turning on um, dynamic subdivision. I'm going to zero mesh this one more time with half. Just get even lower. There we go. And there's our scale. Boom. Okay. I like it a lot. So let's put this guy in perspective so we can take a look at him. I still want to, now that I look at him, I'd like to make him his mouth even wider right here. So, but here he is in perspective. Let's turn it to 85. There we go. And I kind of want to, just one more little detail. Uh, I want to lighten up this bottom of his jaw a little bit like lizards do, like crocs do. Oh, let's do, uh, let's fill that in. I did not color that. There we go. Okay, and then grab my airbrush and this green and lighten it up. And there we go, just for some gradient. That's fun. How would I thicken that scale? Um, I would just use the gizmo across the symmetry and just just thicken it like that. Or I, I, you can mask off that center line and just pull it out. That's, that's what I would do to thicken it. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I've had a blast. Um, thanks for the advice on the YouTube channel. I'll be looking for that soon. Um, and as always, I give away these brushes for free over on my website, 3D characterworkshop.com scroll down about halfway and you can grab those for free and i also teach a course online at the same place 3d characterworkshop.com you can check that out um and yeah so that is it and we will catch you next monday with a brand new character um i have done a shark before i believe I've done 200 of these streams, so I think there's a shark in there somewhere. <laughs> so, yep, thanks everybody. You guys are awesome. Have a wonderful week, and we will catch you all next Monday for another one. All right, take care, everyone. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.